Greetings, West Sacramento. Welcome to West Sac Best Eats, where we dine on all the fabulous food West Sacramento restaurants have to offer. Heard exclusively here on KYWSLP 92.9 FM on your radio dial. I'm your host, Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hi. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining me at our dining room table for our little program here. Okay. So we ate at Casa Yelisco, and Casa Yelisco is... Uh, located at 4055 Lake Road in the city of West Sacramento in the state of California. It's over there by Epi's, which we love, El Ranchero, which is a fine taqueria, and Oishi Teriyaki, which I really like. Um, so it's over there. There's not a lot of uh, residential. There's no residential, um, but there's there's some places to eat over there, out there, over yonder. Uh, Casa Yalisco, not to be confused with the, the other two Yalisco taquerias in West Sacramento. There's I Yalisco number one. There's I Yalisco number two. Uh, in Citrus Heights, where I used to live, there's Mi Lindo Yalisco. Uh, I, I think Yalisco is the next Alberto's. Like, remember there was Alberto's and then there were all these offshoots Adalberto's, Albiertos, mm. Alberts, O's. Um, maybe Yalisco is the next thing. Uh, but if you were wondering, Jalisco is a Mexican state, or state in Mexico, known for mariachi music and tequila. Sign me up. Hello. Uh, both of which originated there. OG, its capital is Guadalajara. I would say uh, Casa Jalisco, we've been there a few times, is a step up from your uh, normal taqueria. Yes. It, yes, it is. Um, it feels more like its own place, whereas most taquerias kind of feel just like the same or yeah. like their chain Chain-y. restaurants yeah yeah i at least go feels like an independent yeah restaurant yeah the taqueria pretty much 90 percent of the menu is always the same to each one and there's some a few uh unique items at casa yalisco which we got um so walking in there's no salsa cart like the cart is there it exists but there's nothing going on there uh, it's, it's just sitting there empty and bacon and free of activity like a sunrise mall, if you will. Um, yeah, but they still have free chips, but you got to go, you got to ask the, the the lady behind the counter, um, which I, I like because first of all, portion control. Because when they're out, when the when the free chips are out in the center of uh, the lobby or whatever, and it's self-serve, watch out. <laughs> you go crazy. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll down uh, 4,000 calories and free chips before i even get my uh item that i ordered my entree um so i like the portion control i also like and uh, like uh when when it is in 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 the center of the lobby or it's self-serve and people walk up with the tongs and help themselves the free chips it's like uh am i the second person to grab these tongs or am I the 160th person to grab these tongs today? And I'm always dropping chips on the floor. And I, <laughs> I look around. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And it's just, it, it's a mess. It, so I I, I miss, I, I love the free chips. Um, but I'm glad that, that they don't do the free uh, serve yourself uh, chips style. Um, and they do have a soda fountain, which is a positive uh, so you can fill up uh, your soda pop to your heart's content. Uh, immediately, honey, you spilled some hot sauce. Uh, we got some chips. We got some salsa. Uh, you spilled some sauce. Yeah, well, the distance from the chip bowl to my mouth, it's very long. Yeah. A lot can happen. Yeah, and they their hot sauces slash salsas are thinner, so they, they don't stick to the chip. Um, but yeah, I did have to clean up uh, the, the sauce you spilled. But then I spilled some. Of uh, I, I was in the same predicament. I spilled some hot sauce on the table. And then we were even. Yeah, yeah. Well, I need a bib. Uh, I am a child, and soon uh, you'll uh, you're, you're gonna feed me like you used to feed Lennox. You're gonna be like, here comes the chip plane, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll open my mouth. Go, ah. <laughs> no, alrighty. Uh, we for whatever reason our food. There, there were two other parties in their dining. It's not a huge uh, space. But for whatever reason, we got our food in a to-go bag. We were never asked here to go. Uh, the other two parties uh, were dined in and got trays and plates. And we got ours in a to-go bag. I don't know. Just saying. Uh, let's talk about the salsas, honey. There's red, green, and orange. 
uh, red and green, your standard, and then the orange. That's uh, the habanero. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, <laughs> this is embarrassing, but the first time I saw that, I thought it was cheese because yeah. it's that orangey color. It's it looks like nacho Vel- cheese. Velveeta y, yeah. But don't make that mistake because the habanero is very hot. Yeah. We, we didn't touch it. Didn't even touch it because I've had it before <laughs> and I almost died. The employee gave us one cup <laughs> of it. Probably like, yeah, you guys, you're either not going to touch it or you're going <laughs> to be running out of here with your head, uh, st- steam coming out of your head and, and your face on fire. Uh, I, ha- I have eaten uh, orange habanero sauce uh, at various taquerias in my life. It's always super hot. Mm-hmm. And it, well, it, it deceives you because you see red. You're like, okay, that's hot. The green, uh, okay, tomatillo. And then the orange is like, oh, it's it's the sun. <laughs> it's appealing. It's so inviting. It, it doesn't look dangerous but it's it's bad it's it's no bueno uh but if you dig super hot then uh dive right in um we've been here like i said a few times uh, before um and i was one of so what differentiates them from your uh, average taqueria is uh, they got empanadas they got pupusas and they got flautas uh, and i always want to get one and yesterday uh, i was telling you uh, my dilemma and uh you were Travis Barker and I was Courtney Kardashian and you said my baby wants a pupusa my baby gets a pupusa yeah I said get it get everything you want get anything you want my baby gets anything she gets she wants my baby my baby wants something my baby's gonna get it um and what well I, I settled on the pupusa and the empanada because they were four bucks each uh, the flautas which if you don't know it's like a gussied up rolled taco they were 10 bucks for the entree so we got a pupusa, we got an empanada, we got two chorizo breakfast burritos. Uh, we got our pupusa with pulled pork. Uh, they did not have pulled park pork. They were out of it or whatever. Uh, so it came with bean and cheese. So if you're just joining us, a pupusa is a thick griddle cake or flatbread from El Salvador and Honduras made with cornmeal or rice flour. It is usually stuffed with one or more ingredients, which may include cheese, chicharron, squash, or refried beans. It is typically accompanied by a curtido, a spicy fermented cabbage slaw and tomato salsa, and is traditionally eaten by hand. Ours came plain, um... But I looked at their Yelp, and like some of the pu- pictures of pupusas were plain like ours, nothing on there. But some of them had the uh, slaw and salsa on there, so I, I'm not sure what what was going on. Uh, we didn't eat it by hand because we're noobs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not native to Honduras or El Salvador. Um, like I said, it costs four dollars and twenty nine cents. Uh, what do you think, honey? Pupusa thoughts, feelings, comments, reflections. I really liked the dough, the bread that it was made with. Yeah, the dough, was, the dough was uh, was uh, the differentiator, made it special. I did dip it in the green salsa that we had because it was too dry on its dry. own. Yeah. It did need some... It needed, needed that slaw. Yeah. And on the menu, it says it comes with slaw and it comes with the, the tomato salsa. Um, but it, we didn't get it, so maybe you have to ask for it. Uh, but yeah, it was... The, it was inside. It was refried beans. There wasn't much going on. I thought it was good. Um, the dough is is fun. It's like a it's crumpet like, um, but beside the besides the refried beans, not much happening. So it does need um, the slaw on it definitely. And if you could get it with the pulled pork, I think that would uh, make it make it much more enjoyable. Uh, and then we got an empanada. And if you're just joining us. Uh, An empanada is a type of baked or fried turnover consisting of pastry and filling. The name comes from the Spanish empanar, to bread, i.e. to coat with bread, and translates as breaded. They are made by folding dough over a filling, which may consist of meat, cheese, tomato, corn, or other ingredients, and then cooking the resulting turnover either by baking or frying. We got ours with uh, pastor as the protein, the meat in there. Again, for $4.29, honey, the empanada, thoughts, feelings, comments, reflections. This was great yeah. and definitely worth that price. It yeah. was a lot bigger, more food than yeah. uh, the pupusa. Yeah. Um, the exterior was crispy. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it would be more doughy. Yeah. So the crispiness was great. They topped it with shredded lettuce yes. and sour cream. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. The meat was really good. Yeah. Love the fried dough. Uh, the cheese, meat inside. Uh 
like you said, add the lettuce, uh, some sort of sauce on top, some sour cream. It was a good time. I enjoyed it. And yeah, you brought up it's the same price point as the pupusa. Um, I thought the empanada, well, it did have a lot more going on. It was a lot more like stuffed and filled. Pupusa's uh, flat, uh, generally speaking. Uh, but yeah, empanada was was uh, was enjoyable. I liked it a lot. It was my first empanada. Mine too. Ever in my life. <laughs> It, uh, the Casa Yalisco took my empanada V, am I right? And my pupusa V. Uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, then we got, uh, well, they called it a protein breakfast burrito. Uh, comes with a choice of meat. We got chorizo, eggs, potatoes, cheese, and pico de gallo. Very controversial. Um, we got ours with no potatoes, no cheese because we're keto or low carb. Or, <laughs> sure. We're, go- we're going to see my aunt in two months, so we're trying to keep the calories down, okay? Um and uh, yeah, no papas, no queso, no potatoes, no cheese with shorty. So eight seventy nine dollar. I'm sorry, eight dollars and seventy nine cents price point. I think that's fantastic. There's a lot of breakfast burritos. They're well over twelve dollars, thirteen, fourteen dollars. Um, it's a so, great price. And yeah. considering we didn't get cheese or potatoes in it, these were huge. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much whenever we go to a Mexican restaurant for breakfast, I always get the same thing. Uh, chorizo breakfast burrito, no potatoes, no cheese, and you get it, and it, it's smaller. It, it's like it's like a, a, a tiny sub or something, a tiny uh, loaf of bread, um, and and that's fine because it, there's no potatoes, no cheese. But this was still giant, like formidable. It looked like my forearm. <laughs> my forearm's really big, honey. I lift. I don't know if you know. I'm really strong. I'm really buff. Uh, so I, I I I'm guessing they made up the no potatoes, no cheese with just more eggs, more chorizo. Yeah, bless their heart. And we were here for it. Uh, oh, but the controversial uh, choice, honey, the pico de gallo uh, inside. Um, well, what did you think? I love pico de gallo. You're I was big fan. I was excited when I saw it. Yeah. I don't. That's not something I ever yeah, have most, in a burrito. Most taquerias, most most Mexican restaurants don't put it in the burrito. And we found out why. <laughs> it was good, yes. But as you go, you realize that all the moisture from the pico yeah. is too much for the tortilla to handle. Yeah. So it, it, it gives out. Yeah. And um, it, 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 the tortilla gets really soft. Yeah. Yeah. There, it's, it's, it's like it was really good, really pleasurable. At the, but at the same time, it, was, it, it didn't need to be there. Um, the, uh, like I was getting some onion, a little crunch, some sweet tomatoes, uh, but it was just too much water, too much moisture in a really hot, uh, tight package that is a burrito. Um, and then, of course, there's the, the chorizo uh, grease already. So you throw the chorizo grease with uh, the pico de gallo, um, wetness, uh, water, moisture. It just it fell apart. Our burritos, uh, they turned into a scramble magically. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just go at it with a fork after that. Yeah, yeah. It was a moisture bomb. Um, it was good overall, but yeah, next time Pico on the side, I think. Yes. Uh, so and it, it, it'll stay cold in, in a little cup. And so you got the cold, you pour it right on uh, your burrito. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, and contrasting with the hot, uh, I think is the way to go. Our total was $32.04. You tip 20%, honey, $6.40. A little high. It's my go-to. Yeah. They gave us our food and to-go bags, honey. Uh, $38.44 was our total. Um, so uh, send some pictures to my friends. Okay, they're my parasocial friends who listen to the same podcast I do. Doughboys is the podcast, if you care. Uh, but some of the comments uh, regarding pico de gallo in a burrito. Uh, one person typed onto the internet, Reddit. Uh, if you strain the pico before adding it to the burrito, it will keep... It's stru- structural integ- integrity. First of all, I like using the word, the phrase structural integrity oh, yeah. when it comes to burrito. Um, but what, what are you, you going to go back there and say, excuse me, chef, <laughs> uh, can you strain the pico? That's a lot of extra work. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I've watched Gordon Ramsay, okay? They, they don't want none of that business. Uh, next person typed, uh, sticky rice or potatoes or tater tots would soak up the chorizo juice. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but we were... Again, we were keto, we were paleo, we were low carb. And at that point in the, in the day, in, uh, on a Saturday, I was keto for a few hours. And let me tell you, honey, it's a lifestyle. 
It really is. Uh, someone else also typed. Well, I actually stole my uh, hot take from previous. Get the pico on the side. Putting a little cold pico on each bite is delicious. Okay, I I stole his work. <laughs> what is that? I plagiarize. I plagiarize him. I played. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mister uh, Person on the internet. Uh, and then finally, I like this comment. Pico or not, that chorizo grease is coming out to play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it sure did. It came I, out to play. <laughs> Casa Yalisco. It could not be stopped. Uh, but overall, uh, what, what do you think, honey? Uh, well, we've been a few times. It's it's it, They've been open mm, a little over a year. Um, but I... I, I enjoy their food. I enjoy their ambiance. It's a nice place. Yeah, I love it there. Um, every time I've been, it's a solid meal. And this was my first time having their chorizo, and it, I was impressed. Yeah. It's good quality. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. Well, there you have it, my fellow West Saxons. Big thumbs up for Casa Yalisco, and I hope you get a chance to enjoy them like we did. Sending you all love and light. Thank you for listening to West Sac Best Eats, where we dine on all the fabulous food West Sacramento restaurants have to offer. Heard exclusively here on KYWSLP 92.9 FM on your radio dial. Hashtag West Sac Best Sac. A ball bye. And from, all speaking of Reddit, from someone who calls himself Paint Me B. Uh, he wrote about our little program here. Loving West Sac Best Eats. You're filling the Huel Hauser sized hole in my heart. And my response is, oh, that's amazing. Bye bye. <laughs>